Georgia Stadium filled to capacity as the Alabama Crimson Tide, the number 10 ranked team in the nation, plays host to the Bulldogs of the University of Georgia. Well, they've been coming to this stadium since right after lunch. They just like to get here early. Here's the reason why. These are the standings as you look at the SEC. Florida 3-0, then Georgia and South Carolina at 2-1, Tennessee at 1-2. How about the Western Division? Well, this is how they stand. Alabama 2-0, then LSU and Mississippi State at 1-1, Arkansas 1-2, and, and Ole Miss 1-3, and Auburn 3-0, and, and of course not eligible for the SEC title. The man they call the Wild Thing. Watts will kick it off for the Alabama Crimson Tide. He looks the part. Bryce Hunter. You can see him the Brady game. You'll see why, but this kid kicks it. It may go left and it may go right, but if it goes straight, it may go out of the back of the end zone. Well, there it is right there. Seven yards deep in the end zone. Here are the starting lineups for the Georgia Bulldogs brought to you by Russell Athletic. Eric Zier, he had his first interception last week. It, it came against Ole Miss. In fact, he had three. He can't do that tonight and a win over Alabama. Wide receivers, they're very good ones, especially Bryce Hunter. Bama can't go to sleep on number 88. In the offensive line, they're trying to get everybody healthy. Finally, after missing two games, Adam Meadows is back at that split tackle side. Straight ahead with the run. Five. Pat it off at 10 and a first down on a running play right off the top. Here are the folks that are going to try to stop him tonight. Damian Jeffries has been playing extremely well. In fact, he had a fumble recovery for a touchdown just last week against Tulane. The linebackers, boy, this is an active group. The, the one the coaches really like, Andre Royal, number 36. He goes to the ball extremely hard. And in the secondary, three-year letterman Sam Shade. He's not starting tonight at strong safety. It's Eric Turner. I think the Tide coaching staff is trying to send a message there. Zara rolls the pocket, throws it complete up to the 42-yard line. Jeff Thomas is on the receiving end, and Mike back-to-back -back first down. First down is the down that Eric Zier has to make hay on because... The nickel and dime defense of Alabama. You remember what they did to Miami and Gino Toretta. You don't want to get in long yardage situations with them. Eric Zier had a shoulder bruise last week against Ole Miss. Didn't practice on Monday and Tuesday. But you're looking at a fighter, Ron. I mean, you, you know he's a tough guy. Again, boy, is the lone setback. And he has to come up very close to hear the option or the audible from his quarterback because of the noise. Draw play again. This time it's diagnosed. He may have won. That's it. Ralph Staten, who we didn't know if he was going to play in the ball game tonight because of an elbow injury, comes up to make the stop. Greg Davis, uh, the quarterback coach for Georgia, told me that Eric Zire really had a great week. He looks forward to preparing against this Alabama defense because it's a lot what he'll see in the next level on second and third down in the pros. So here's that situation Mike talked about. Second and long for the Bulldog. Screen. Hassan Graham, and that won't go anywhere. Number 10, Tommy Johnson. The senior comes up and diagnoses it nicely with two plays in a row. This Alabama defense has been right there. Ron, now, it's third down and long. Now, in this situation with Eric Zier, you look for some kind of swing pass or a draw or trap, something because he's going to be facing a lot of DBs in this situation. Alabama's offense is poor. So don't turn it over. And if you have to do anything, punt it down and see what they can do on their side of the ball. The line to make is the 46 of Alabama. Picks up a great block. Now delivers the pass. It's complete. And he's going to have the first down at the 45, Bryce Hunter. Good call by Wayne McDuffie because you're going to roll Eric Zier to the left. Figuring you're going to get pressure inside. Now you move the pocket. You never know where the quarterback's going to be. He's not always going to be in a drop back situation. So you have to go at him at different angles.
draw play, and he'll take it to the 40-yard line, Staten again. Ron, they're running the ball early with draws, and that's going to help them. In the first two games, they were 1-1 one one because they threw 96 times and only ran the ball 34 times. The last two games, 2-0, oh, 77 rushes as opposed to 64 passes. They, in the last two games, they've taken the pressure off of Eric Zire. Wayne McDuffie on the left of your screen, the offensive coordinator. Hits the board, tries to turn the corner. He will be stopped after a gain of a yard and a half. Staten, along with Cedric Samuel. And again, it's going to be a third and long. It, it's so important, Ron, that they start, and they have a start where they run the football. Ray Goff looks on. He knows that to keep this Alabama defense honest, where they'll play regular personnel on the field, he has a better chance of winning this football game. Just any kind of running game to keep them honest. Mike, you see number 41 in the middle. That's Ralph Staten. We didn't know if he'd even be able to play tonight. He has had a severely injured elbow. He's already got three tackles. They started him. field puts a head down and whoa you can hear the groan from the crowd Samuel is the man who came up and hit him and let's see he is gonna have the first down yes you, you just I'm just keep I just keep getting impressed by number 10 Tom Coughlin's here tonight the new coach of the Jacksonville team I'm sure he's here to watch Eric Zire but when you have a quarterback with this mental and physical toughness, he just wants to make things happen. Remember the shoulder injury he had against Ole Miss? Well, he doesn't remember it. Hines Ward comes in at the lone running back position. It's number 19. Pitch comes to him. You can see he almost lost his footing before he made the turn. Samuel is right there to hit him. And that's going to be just uh, no game. When Georgia puts Eric Zire in the shotgun, Ron, it's very difficult to get to it. First of all, he's five yards deep. He's going to take two more steps to three more steps back. So he's eight yards deep, and he's so quick at getting rid of the football. Hines Ward he is a quarterback, but they noted his running abilities. He's the number two tailback. Blitz, middle screen, and won't go anywhere. That is a great defensive play by Alabama to make the stop is 78 Powell. Ozell Powell. We're gonna see Alabama send the linebacker right here to try to get pressure on him. That's state number 41, trying to get pressure on Eric Zire. He dumped the football off. And number 78, Ozell Powell just dropped out as a defensive lineman and became a defensive linebacker. Third down, and they need the 21 and a half. Lots it has it complete to Bryce Hunter. Oh my goodness, where did he sneak out of? Eric Zire is right on the money. You're going to see a corner route right here out of Bryce Hunter. Works down the football field and runs the corner. The flat route in front of him, Bryce Hunter, and open in front of Sam Shade, number 31. Nice open drive by Georgia. Mike back into the ball game is Larry Bowie. He had been the starting fullback because of his size. They think he has the quickness also to be their tailback. So they're using him a lot more. I'm sure for blocking purposes as well. Zings it complete inside the three yard line is Hunter. First and goal, Georgia. They're going to say incomplete. They're working on Sam Shade, who lost his starting position, as you talked about in the opening lineup. Bryce Hunter, they like the match. Bryce Hunter, 88 versus Sam Shade. In and out of the hands of Bryce Hunter. You won't see that a great deal. No. Very good receiver. Five of six is Eric Zire, 37 yards on this opening drive. For the end zone. Oh, he overthrows him, and he had Jeff Thomas in the back of the end zone. And Alabama has a player shaken up at the 21-yard line. 
And it looks like Shannon Brown is the man who was injured. Well, he was hurt in practice this week. He was hurt in the field goal drill. He's got a bad back. Hey, Mike! Hey, Mike! Watch this now. The defensive line will do a lot of maneuvers tonight to try to get to Eric Zire. A lot of cross stunts, a lot of cross stunts on the outside and the inside, just trying to confuse the blocking scheme. And that's what they want to do. They want to make sure they get a hit on Eric Zire. They're not going to sack him a lot tonight because he's too quick to get rid of the ball, but they want to make sure he gets hit. Well, there's a timeout, so we'll take it with him. 9.09 left in the opening quarter. We are scoreless. Third down. You see where the ball is resting at the 14. They need the Alabama 5. Well, Shines by Alabama, so they got a free play. Flips it out. Hines Ward caught the ball, and I think the only reason he was so reckless is because he knew he had a free play. You're exactly right, and that's the thing Greg Davis, the quarterback coach, talks about is his field presence. He knows he has a free play. Why not make something happen? <laughs> Well, I think he's the best quarterback in college football. He doesn't have the cast around him, but the cast is getting a little bit better in the last couple weeks since we watched him against Tennessee. Mike, the situation that he had right there probably uh, thrills. You talk about Tom Claflin being up here uh, watching uh, tonight along with a lot of other scouts. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, previous spot, repeat, third down. They want somebody that just strictly doesn't go from the playbook. They want to see what a guy is able to do in an ad lib situation. And he always seems to come up big when that happens. And, and the other thing I like in Eric Dyer is his toughness. I was reading an article where he said he re read about Johnny Unitas breaking his nose in a game of the mud. He put the mud in his nose. He said, that's the way you got to play quarterback. He stopped the bleeding. Said, that's the way I want to be. <laughs> and I'll tell you, he is a tough quarterback, Eric Dyer. So third down and five, and the ball just inside the ten. Steps it up, sends it, touchdown, Georgia, James Warner. <laughs> So eight minutes and 35 seconds showing on the stadium clock as Cannon Parkman comes in to convert the extra point. And Georgia took the opening kickoff and marched down the field using almost seven minutes to score. We'll take a break. We'll be right back to Tuscaloosa after this. And Eric Zier on the sideline. And he has just got to be extremely pleased, Mike, because to draw it up as they did and to take it for almost seven minutes off the clock to go down the field on this on against this defense. He is well prepared tonight. They've really set three wide receivers to the wide side of the field and worked back into the short side of the field where they had the advantage. Low bounder to the 10 yard line. Out to the 30. Rondi Gibson will have the return and we will see the Alabama Crimson Tide on offense for the first time this evening. Sherman Williams, Mr. Offense for the Crimson Tide. In fact, the focal point, yeah, over 50% of everything comes with him. Good group of wide receivers. Simply, they just don't see that many passes here. Todrick Malone, the man that they'd like to see become the next David Palmer. And the offensive line, this is an area that's been a concern right now. John Stevenson is moving from center at to right guard tonight to try to help things out. Wants to throw in first down, and he's going to be sacked at the 25-yard line by Travis Jones. So the defensive starters for the Georgia Bulldogs, a defensive line where they now have a freshman starting at nose guard, number 66, Travis Stroud, and the coaches think he's going to be an awfully good one. The linebackers, uh, well, there's nobody any better in the SEC than Randall Godfrey. Very, very tough. And the defensive backs, deepest part of this team, and tonight they get Will Muschamp back at the free safety spot. 
Pitch goes wide, goes to the ground, and they will lose five more. Must champ, by the way, I mentioned as free, uh, I meant strong safety. The free safety is Corey Johnson. Ron, this is an offense that doesn't have a lot of confidence, and they can't expect to start this game like this and stay in this game with Georgia. Jay Barker's been sacked 13 times for 87 yards coming into this game. Now add another sack. He's been sacked now 14 times. 27 1 and 1 as a starter. Right now, Mike, he has a third down situation. He's got to take it all the way out to the 41 yard line. Steps up, zooms his pass, and has it complete to the 30 yard line. And Malone will be shoved out of bounds well short of the first down mark. Ron, the thing I believe that Alabama has not been able to compensate for is the loss of David Palmer. He was their offense last year. The kicking game and the reverses, uh, they threw the ball to him. No one on Alabama's football team other than Sherman Williams have stepped up to the plate to replace David Palmer. Somebody has to do that tonight. Brian Deal to kick. He's had problems with his right ankle. If you look at Chris McCraney, the sophomore out of Moultrie, Georgia, back in a single safety. Good kick by Deal. No problem with the ankle on this one. To the 23. Been hit by his own man. 44 yards in the kick. So we'll go to break. And Eric Zier prepares to come back on the field. 7 0 in Georgia. Georgia moved downfield on a run by Heinz Ward, but the drive ended with a turnover deep in Bama territory. Alabama then moved into scoring position through the air and on the ground. And as we pick up the action at the start of the second quarter, the Tide has its second down and four on Georgia's 24 yard line. 7 0. Georgia leads at the end of the first quarter. And as far as the time of possession, Georgia 8 30. Mike in that opening quarter, Alabama 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Except for the fumble, Georgia's been perfect. Williams, he's going to be hit high by Randall Godfrey. And let's take a look at the key play of that first quarter, Mike. Georgia was on the move again. Larry Bowie's going to catch the football, number 15, to cough it up. Eric Turner comes away with it, and instead of Georgia coming away with points, they wind up with a turnover situation, and boy, they're still working on him on the sideline. In fact, Mike Adam, we understand you're close by. What can you uh, tell us? Well, Ron and Mike, uh, Larry has his shoulder pads off. They say he sprained his shoulder, the AC Larry joint to be specific, but they expect him back in the game. Okay, well, no wonder he turned the football over if he got a hit that badly that he was injured on the play. Ray Goff knows full well that sounds that play in the first quarter. They go on down to get more points that in this house, which is very tough to win in against this Bama defense, that that would in true, in, indeed be an extra trump card. Short yardage. I don't know if Barker got it or not. Tried to go up over the top. And Marcus Williams is the first man who came there to hit it. A quarterback sneak, you want to stay as low as you possibly can unless you feel like you can get it, but you just make a bigger target when you leap over. So the way Eric Zyre's playing, you go for it on fourth down anyway. Isn't that the truth? This is the balance at the end of the first quarter here for uh, for Georgia as far as selection. Ten passes, 62 yards, nine rushes, 76 yards. A great balance by Georgia. Great play calling. This is what they didn't have the night we saw them against Tennessee. It's Tennessee, yeah. I think they come right back and with the quarterback sneak and just get a little bit lower and pick it up. But I, I just, when you're playing a quarterback that's hot like Eric Zire, this is no time for a field goal. I agree with the call. I don't care what happens on the I'd go for it myself. Fourth down inches. Quick snap straight ahead. He's got it. Kazi, Stevenson, Belcher, Harborough, and McBeal, all five, surging straight ahead, and their quarterback, Jay Barker, picking up the first down. 
Ron, the interesting thing about a quarterback sneak tonight on two plays is that John Stevenson, who was the starting center, is now a guard. So now you have a new center, John Causey, in there, number 71. So that's who he went behind. He tried to go behind Stevenson, the left guard. Counter Trey Williams, couple, maybe three. Marcus Williams took his feet out from under him, and uh, Philip Daniels finished him off. He had success with the play action, the bootleg type of plays where Jay Barker makes the play fake and then rolls. To try to find a tight end, maybe Patrick Hayden, Tony Johnson across the middle. You can see the blocker in front and Georgia right there to stop it. Straight in the pocket. Blocker over the middle, complete inside the 10 yard line. Curtis Brown. Ron, it wasn't pretty, but it was a completion. And that's all that matters. And that's why a lot of people like Jay Barker as the quarterback. 27 1 and 1 as a starter. This isn't pretty. Sidearm throw. Curtis Brown picks up the first down inside the 10. Mike DeMann, who caught the pass. Curtis Brown, what a great story. He had the, the knee surgery. He still has his speed. It seems as though no ill effects. The number 85, who caught that pass. Sherman Williams. Boy, he gets blasted. Greg Bright, number 45, the first man to come up and hit him. Here's a closer look at Curtis Brown. It's it's always good to see that an athlete can come back from an injury, the kind of injury he had. We had to have complete remaking of the surgery, and they say no ill effects. In fact, the amazing thing is the coaches say they don't think he really lost a step. It doesn't happen in their No, it doesn't. And it's nice to see uh, Alabama. It feels nice to have him back to see Jay Barker. Seven for seven, 15, 51 yards. Looking quick. In the end zone. Looking for Curtis Brown. Overthrown. Robert Edwards had the cover. That's a great matchup there. Edwards said to be the best athlete in that secondary for Georgia. Here's the matchup. Just a fade pass just thrown too far out of the reach of Curtis Brown. Had a step on him. You can see he was reading his eyes. So it's third down. Chad Key, number 19, comes into the ball game. Here comes a reverse. Trip and gets away. He'll score. Tarrant Lynch, and they had him for a loss. He went to an unbalanced line, ran the reverse to Terrence Flint for the touchdown. Michael Proctor knocks it home, and with 11.22 left until the halftime, we are tied at seven. Both teams traded possessions, and as we rejoin the action, the game is still tied at seven. Georgia has possession, first down and ten after an Alabama punt. Seven minutes, 43 seconds remain in the first half of this 1994 SEC conference game right here on ESPN Classic. Mike, you know, when we did them, it was interesting to note both of those tailbacks are four three runners. I like that Syracuse team there. They, they play it. Uh, they always come back in the fourth quarter. Well, there's uh, Brian Bergdorf. The junior warming up. And we probably will see him on the next series. As we mentioned, Coach didn't want to put him in inside his own 20 yard line. Makes the draw. This time he throws it and has it. Bryce Hunter has been just on fire. Let's take a look at the comparison to the quarterbacks tonight, Mike. Speaking of on fire. 
Eric Zier, you can see 10 out of 12, and both of them throwing for good completions and uh, 81, 51 yards and runs. The thing about Brian Bergdorf, getting back to that, when you have a quarterback and you tell him you're going to play him, and the first team quarterback knows that, then you don't have a quarterback controversy. They know, and they know you're not yo yoing them, they know you're designing it that way, so they feel a little bit better about that. Hansworth, speaking of quarterbacks. He will be next year, but he's at the tailback this year because he can run like that as he'll take it inside the 45. Lord, Willie Gaston will trip him up at the 42-yard line. It's called it the 43. Burton, make the tackle. Eric Zier just continues to lead. When his team was on the sideline, he was talking to him, just continually trying to up his ball club because he knows he's got a young group here with him. Fun young man to visit with, and we mentioned in the Tennessee game. So very confident. Not cocky, but confident. Now moving all over the place that time. No foul. Defense in the neutral zone. Offensive man in front of him came up. By rule, no foul. Repeat, second down. Ron, what is happening to Eric Zier is Alabama is trying to show him a different coverage. When he lifts his leg, Alabama tries to move to where they're going to be. They're trying to disguise him the secondary. When he's in a shotgun, they're trying to get him the last second look. Then they move to their coverage. Hines Ward and he got tripped up just enough by Damian Jeffries. If he had not, he might have had the first down. Draw play slows down the pass rush of Alabama. Damian Jeffries, number 91, was just able to get his hand on him. Georgia, five out of six, third down conversions. You know, Mike, the forecast for later tonight is an 80% chance of rain. Scoring in this first half might become even more important. Very important. Shovel pass. Heinz Ward. He has the first down as he goes inside the 37 to the 36-yard line. Sam Shade defensively for the, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Another running play. When you expect the pass, the shovel draw, which is just like a running play for you. Slowing down the rush of Alabama. And running the draw on first down, this would be an excellent first down throw down. Well, now Bill Montgomery, number 13, checks into the lineup. The Sega student uh, athlete of the game for the Georgia Bulldogs. Middle screen. Flag is down, and Jeff Thomas will take it close to the 27-yard line. Willie Gaston stops him, and let's check that marker. defense penalty declines second down our score is seven apiece as we are about to go under 430 left until half ten short drop quick pass German boy does he get cracked hard by Tommy Johnson hold the ball hold the ball Ron. Ray saying hold the ball yeah. and his he said, receiver hold said, my head. He said hold my head. Yeah. Ron, the excellent game plan by Georgia because everything they're doing is to frustrate the, the rush of Bama. 
because everything's a short pass. They're not able to get there and desire. They can't even get close to him. But you talk about something that frustrates the defensive line now, but the quarterback is so quick getting rid of the football. Really kept them off balance, haven't they? Yeah, really good have. the this game. has been an excellent game plan on both sides of the ball for Georgia in the first half. <laughs> that was great. Right? Hold the ball. <laughs> and I'm sure Jervin was, Coach, I'll get the ball, you get my head. We'll pick them both up. Jesus Correa to say. First down from the 24. Going to go to the end zone. Looking for the man. He's got it. Touchdown, Hassan Graham. And Mike, at the end of the replay, you may see just a little push off by Graham to get the space he needed. Well, you, if Tommy Coughlin here from Jacksonville is watching Eric Zire, he's got to be impressed with number 10. Parkman with the extra point is good. And Georgia breaks the tie with 4 16 left until halftime. The dogs go on top 14 to 7. So Bergdorf is in the ball game. You see his numbers. 6'2", 200, a junior out of Cedartown, Georgia. He's going to throw on first down. Zings it too high, looking for Todrick Malone. Mike, why is it everybody loves a backup quarterback? Well, they always like the underdog. I think that's the reason. And uh, but Brian Bergdorf really isn't a backup quarterback. He was the MVP in the Gator Bowl against North Carolina. Beat a good North Carolina team in the in that bowl last year, Homer Smith said he's not a backup. He has gifted speed. And almost every coach that we talked to said we have an eagerness to see Brian in the ball game. So and of course, like he, was number, he was number one in spring training as well. Short drop and a quick pass. Patrick Malone had to go through his fingertips. Last champ had the cover, but it was too tall. Ron, to me, the story of the first half, beside Eric Zire, is the fact that Alabama cannot run the football. With much success against a defense that has given up a lot of yardage on the ground. Alabama can't find the key to this Georgia defense. They cannot run the football. You know what I mean? One of the keys tonight, though, which Georgia was not doing early, their defense is not having to stay on the field all night. They're playing ball control. Exactly right. You look at Sherman, Sherman Williams, he's averaging 152 rushing. And I'm, I'm not sure he's not even having any long runs at all here in the first half. Third down. Third goal. Over the middle, incomplete. Turner's who he was looking for. Godfrey with the cover. And that's going to be one, two, three, and out. Goes incomplete. Randall Godfrey, good, solid linebacker for this Georgia defensive football team. And only Brandon twice Dino, in 11 games 12. last year, Ron, did they hold an opponent I'm under 20 in. points. So Marion Campbell really has helped a little bit here, plus a year, defensive year older. Williams, eight carries, 11 yards. That's been the difference to me in this first half. Deals kick into the win, and fair catch is called for by McCraney. Three minutes and 47 seconds left until halftime. Georgia 14, Alabama 7. Gene Stallings paces on the sideline. Eric Zyers is a superstitious quarterback. He picks off the football on Thursday that he wants to use in the game and just keeps it with him. Shot. 
Shannon Brown is back in the defensive lineup for Alabama, number 75. So that's good news for Crimson Tide fans. Running play. Hines Ward going to be knocked down for a loss. And I'll tell you, Alabama's getting the quickest start across the neutral zone with no flags that I've seen this year. They really they have the countdown. They're like racehorses. When that gate opens, they're gone. Gene Stallings trying to decide exactly what he'll do in the next series with which quarterback. Zaire has it complete to a speedy Hassan Graham. Gets a block and is going to be bumped out of bounds inside the 30. Here's what happens on this play, Ron. We'll see if we can stop it here as we go along. Here's Hassan Graham catching the football. Now what you stop it right here. Now what you want to do if you're Alabama, you want to form a picket fence and you want to force him back inside. But they do not do that on this play. They get caught inside. And thus the extra yardage. Juan Daniels, number 12 with a block, he just made a mistake and left him outside. That was Deshae Townsend who knocked him out of bounds. Deshae has been suffering from an injured back and he is still down at the 29 yard line. You could see the cross body block that he threw on him to take him down. And you have to wonder if that's not what he has aggravated there. Mike Adamley, let's check in with you. Well, Ron, you mentioned that great pantheon of Alabama quarterbacks, Namus, Stabler, and this man, Bart Starr, before the game, a special award, the Paul W. Bryant Athlete Alumni Award. You've got so much hardware at home, so many accolades, but I know this one has special meaning. It really does. I didn't play for Coach Bryant. It, that makes it even more special to me. Your impressions of the game, and particularly Eric Zier. Uh, it rhymes with fire. That's exactly what he has going for him tonight. He is red hot, and uh, we're going to have to get something going Alabama. We're going to have some disappointed fans, and they're playing extremely well. You know, you weren't the tallest quarterback in the world, and one of the knocks against Eric being a high number one draft pick is his height. What about that whole theory? Well, I think when I was playing, it, uh, it it had some validity today. It may have even more because, as you and I both know, they are even taller today. But the way he can throw it, I think they can find ways that he can overcome that. Bart, great to see you. Congratulations on your award. Thanks for joining us. Bart Starr, one of the classiest guys you'll ever want to meet. Ron and Mike? Yeah, that's, that is for sure. That's some great football teams, not just here at Alabama, but, uh, of course, with the Green Bay Packers. Talk about a school with quarterbacks, Ron. This school right here, of course, my favorite is the left-hander, Kenny Stabler. Yeah. I have, he's my favorite. Favorite in college and in the pros. But they've had some good ones. So they are having to help Deshae Townsend off the field. And the freshman, as we mentioned, has been bothered by a back injury. And you have to wonder, as gingerly as he is being as he's going off the field right there if that maybe not the reoccurrence of that problem he's a punt return man uh, besides starting at right corner tonight so we'll get an update on him 43 yards in the last play first down from the Alabama 27 and a half Zaire has hit 10 passes in a row pressure on the running game and then Hines Ward comes out of it and picks up a couple Matt Parker finally corrals him about to go under 245 until halftime. Georgia by seven. Georgia's plan has been perfect, Ron. They're keeping Alabama off balance. Alabama on defense just can't get in a rhythm against this Georgia offense. Every pass is short. Uh, they go deep for the touchdown pass. He needs 58 yards. Hines Ward right up the middle, breaks it big at the 10, at the five. First and goal, Georgia Bulldog Samuel got a hand on his ankle. Hines Ward was a heavily recruited quarterback and decided to go to Georgia. Asked him to move to tailback to help the running game. You see what type of athlete he is. Here's a quarterback making those moves. Good block by Troy Stark, number 75. Listen, this offensive line, as Georgia calls a timeout, has been, <laughs> I think, misread. They're having a really outstanding ball game tonight. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back. 
of the defensive players of the Crimson Tide asking the fans to come alive and make a lot of noise. But this man's football team is at the six yard line with a first and goal. Mike, I think one of the great differences in this first half, we talked about this offensive line has played extremely well tonight. But the defense of Georgia has only had to play 23 snaps tonight. First game of the year, 91 snaps, 84 that second week in the game we saw them against uh, Tennessee. Well, Ron, we talked about it at the opening. Ray Goff had to protect Eric Zire. They haven't got to him one time. Had to develop a running game. I think they've rushed for more yardage running the football in Alabama. In the third, they had to have good success on first down, and they've owned first down against Alabama. Well, let's see what happens right here. First and goal from the six. Straight up the middle, maybe one. Shelma Callaway, the redshirt freshman out of Colquitt, Georgia, got the call that time. Simpson checks into the lineup with the 43. Draw play. And it's going to go for nothing. Mike Adamley, let's go to you. What do you have for us? Well, Ron, Alabama knows they need a stopper, and Shannon Brown is back in the game, but he's playing in a lot of pain. Again, a dislocated shoulder. They fitted him with a protective harness that prevents him raising his arm above his shoulder. But 75 is back in the game, and you can see that right arm, the tape underneath the shoulder pads. Okay, Mike, uh, we had mentioned that he had come back in, and as we said, the coaches said he'd been playing out of his mind. So, obviously, he wanted to come back, and they wanted him to come back. Third down and goal. The ball just outside the five. Over the middle. Touchdown. Did he hold on? Yes. Bryce Hunter. at home and with 57 seconds left until the halftime it is 21 7 Georgia Ron notice that they have four wide receivers but here's going to be the catch a quick slant from Eric Zire to Bryce Hunter they really spread trying to spread Alabama out down here just a quick slant pass but look at the ball it's delivered low and inside it's against Eric Turner 39 a well thrown ball by Eric Zire Georgia coming into this football game allowed 200 yards rushing tonight the key I think in this football game is they stop Alabama's running game cold. Thanks for the Williams he's going to go to the middle and has him open it's Curtis Brown to the 37 and now let's see what kind of clock management the Crimson Tide could come up with. They still have all three of their timeouts. Out of the pocket and he underthrows. That'll stop the clock with 37 ticks left. Parker's pass intended for Sherman Williams. Incomplete. Well, coming up at the halftime, another Colorado spoiler. Uh, the top 25 upsets today and the Heisman watch. All of that and more at uh, halftime, which is about 37 seconds away. I didn't get to see much of the Texas game, but John Makovic seemed to have them ready down there. They had a great plan and uh, pushed them to the limits. Field goal at the at the waning moments in uh, the Buffalo, are they a team of destiny? Mark is gonna, now he's going to throw. And complete stepping out of bounds is Curtis Brown at midfield. That only took seven seconds. Philip Daniels with good pressure from the right side. First down, Alabama. Ball is midfield. He is in the game. Oh, 
Side arms it out. Did he hold on? They say yes at the 40 yard line. Good catch. Curtis Brown, number 85 again. And Ron, this is where last year David Palmer would be showing up on the field. Everybody had to double cover him. And of course, Alabama's pointing to the clock. They lost some time here. Well, the stadium clock will show 13 seconds. Gene Stallings conferring with the officials. I don't know if he's going to get more put in the bank or not. But uh, at least they get an opportunity with the call timeout. And according to our numbers, Alabama still would have two timeouts left. In this first half, throwing the football, Alabama, the favorite receiver so far has been Curtis Brown. Five catches, a total of 60 yards. Well, they have big shoes to fill with David Palmer leaving. As he was their offense. So time is back in. Here's the situation. 13 seconds left until halftime. Georgia 21, Alabama 7. It is a second down at the Bulldog 41 and a half or 40 and a half yard line. Barker over the middle, got him open. Goes to his tight end inside the 20 and to the 15 is Tony Johnson. Five seconds showing on the clock. Ron, Tony Johnson had made that catch. When he visited here, his hostess was a girl named Tanya. She was the Bama Bell. She showed him around the campus. After she showed him around the campus, he said, I'm going to marry her. He told the coaches. And he didn't even make his next visit to ten Tennessee. Came back and married her. He came to school here. Not only married her, he made a big catch here. 26 yards on the reception. And what has happened now with only five ticks on the clock? Michael Proctor will come on and attempt the field goal, which should be in the vicinity of 32 yards. It's been a good drive by Jay Barker. Parker gets a long time to look this one over. Jordan's got a timeout yet, too. They may use theirs. Nice time to ice him again. They're not going to use it. They're going to put the ball down at the 23 yard line. Now, Philip Daniels, number 89, came very close to getting to an extra point a while ago. Ball is down, kick is on the way. It hit the upright and went through. We got the same clock operator that was at Michigan State today. <laughs> At one second. Chester Lewis is the man who was uh, shaken up in the play as you take one more look at it. Chester is the man who handles the long snaps. That's the reason Proctor was coming over talking to him. And he bangs that right upright, and just like a pinball machine, it comes through. We'll try to get a report on Chester Lewis, but uh, that's the man that Proctor was waiting to visit with on the sideline. Chester's a walk on. Tight end slash deep snapper. Mike, I think from a momentum standpoint, that that's an awfully, awfully big situation for Alabama. It's big, but you got to find a way. Two things at halftime: you got to find a way to stop Eric Zire slowing down a little bit, but you got to find a way to run the football. You got to be able to get Sherman Williams in this game. Eric Zire waits, and unless we have something strange happened and he will not be able to take another snap in his first half as Watts will kick it off to the Alabama Crimson Tide. And he's just going to line drive this one. And it will be recovered at the 18-yard line. And that's the end of the first half with our score. Georgia 21, Alabama 10.
21 to 10, our halftime score. And Mike Godfrey, there are some surprised people in this press box we've been talking with during the halftime intermission. But Eric Zier is not a surprise. 16 of 18, three touchdowns. He's been perfect, Ron. He really hasn't made any mistakes. You're going to see the touchdown pass there. Hassan Graham is the outside receiver. He's going to run a vertical route. But here's where really what happens. The inside receiver runs a vertical route, ties up Willie Gaston, number 22. Eric Zier looks to the outside where he's got one-on-one, -on -one, hits Hassan Graham for the touchdown. Pass chart. You can see that Eric Zyers had completions all over the field, but what set up the touchdown passes is the underneath routes. Really a good offensive game plan coming into the night. They've kept Alabama off balance. Mike, let me get you to do some guessing here. If you were in the locker room uh, for, for Alabama, what do you think just the things we just talked about as far as the running game and all, that that's what Gene talked about? I think he's got to sell his team on, even though they're down by 11 they got to get back to run the football I mean, you got to have mix at the five yard line of this return Gibson <laughs> Sherman Williams and Mike here's the rushing chart with him Came into the game averaging over 150 yards rushing. He's had three attempts inside for five yards. Outside, not much better. Four for four. They've got to find a way to get him loose. Play action. Deep over the middle. It is caught just across midfield by Patrick Malone. Robert Edwards on the tackle. Solid throw by Jay Barker. Now here again, we talk records. 27-1-1 one one as a starter, but what you have when you're 27-1-1, one one, your players believe in you. A great throw to Todrick Malone, number 80. So they come out of the locker room and they're attacking on offense. 29 yards in the pass play. Straight back, pressure was on. Barker going to scramble to his left, and he makes that one complete. And oh, Malone really got punished Barker because of the high out. throw by Edwards. I'm not so sure he wasn't trying to throw it away. Number 80. It's a good completion by Jay Barker. Again, by time, his route to the right was not open. You're going to see him. He doesn't force Edwards. it in. Edwards. Starts to move again. Made good decision. Now, against Arkansas, his scrambling on a pass play really is what caused the Alabama win. Uh, so he does scramble well, looks for receivers. Second down, this is Williams. Breaks off the tackle, and then is going to be wrapped up at the 35. Corey Johnson is the man who stopped him. When you think of Alabama football, you think of running the football, Gene Stallings. And the fans now are back in this one, Ron. Mike, the one thing I notice is they start the second half. Stevenson had gone to guard. They put him back at center in the second quarter. With John Causey is back at center, and John Stevenson is back at right guard. Looks for the end of wide open. Somebody blew a coverage. Malone will walk in. Sherman Williams is the man that he wanted. So let's take a break. 13-18 left in the third quarter. 21-16 Georgia. 
The Crimson Tide continued their momentum in the third quarter with a 35-yard field goal by kicker Michael Proctor. With the Tide still trailing 21-19, we move ahead in the game where the Bulldogs have it first down and 10 on their own 33. Good mix in that scoring drive. Seven rushes, eight passes. 7.34 off the clock. Well, the offensive line of Alabama discussing uh, what's been going on in the, on the field. They get a chance for a breather, but Kareem McNeil looking back toward the camera and everybody getting a well-deserved rest. 16-play drive by Alabama. Hines Ward, and he's still going strong. Mike. I'm going to tell you something. They may have second thoughts about making him a quarterback next year if he continues to improve this way. Well, one thing about it, there's not a quarterback that has much experience other than Eric Zire, but really, Damian Jeffries, number 91, missed the tackle. He was in the backfield against Hines Ward, just missed the tackle. Hines, as you can see, is shaken up. He's over 100 yards tonight. 13 carries, 113 yards, and he has injured either his left foot or ankle. Bill Montgomery comes in replacing him. They take it to Montgomery. Zaire complete. Bryce Hunter. And Zaire got decked after the throw again. And he's been wincing a little bit after, <laughs> after a couple of hits. One on an interception and the other on the completion. Kelvin Moore, number 95. I, I'm sorry, that's excessive. I'm sorry. That, that's got to be 15 yards. You've got to protect the quarterback. He's vulnerable. Montgomery stopped after no gain, probably a loss on the play. As John Walters, from his middle linebacking spot, comes up to make the hit. SC falls to Oregon today. The Ducks now three and two. <laughs> Got it complete, and it's Graham. That's twice tonight that he's hit Graham in full stride. 25 yards on the completion and even for a secondary as good as this one at Alabama when that guy's full stride it's tough see what Eric Zyre's looking at this safety and he's running a very skinny post right here inside of the safety to Hassan Graham he's watching the safety see the safety work the other side he can he's able to come back to Hassan Graham number four reading the free safety all the way first and goal Georgia Ward back in the ball game at tailback Ward will not make the five. Good, tough hit by the Alabama defense. First of all, Damian Jeffries got there to make the hit on him, and I think you can see that Ward is not 100%. And very quickly, Bill Montgomery will come back in and spell him. Now four yards to become the all time SEC passing leader. On the first touchdown they scored, they threw to the tight end and the running back away from the right side here. See if they go back to it. Yes, right over the middle. Simpson, touchdown. He gets the record and the six points. And exactly back to the same thing they scored the first touchdown on. Going to have the tight end go down, and the back is going to come inside. A B angle play that Bill Walsh made famous out of Stanford and the 49ers. So we'll take a break. Zaire on his 20th completion tonight is the new all time SEC leader. 
Eric Dreyer has completed 15 of his last 16 passes. And in fact, he completed that one. It was intercepted by, by Alabama. But with the pass, as we mentioned, he needed four yards to, uh, to get the record. And as soon as this kickoff is completed, we'll go down to Mike Adamley, who has a little more on that subject. 119 remaining in this third quarter, 28 to 19, Georgia on top. You can see that Alabama Crimson Tide defense sitting around the blackboard, uh, in this case, the whiteboard on the sideline, and getting the chalks up. Covered as nobody got to it, and you could see one of the special team players really got racked hard. Let's go down to Mike Adamley. Mike. All right, Ron and Mike, this Wilson 1001 hot piece of property. It's on its way back to Buttsmere Hall in Athens, Georgia, the Georgia Hall of Fame. It'll sit next to the, the two Heisman trophies of Herschel Walker and Frank Sickwich. And this man, Jeff Dantzler from the athletic department, is entrusted with it. So get back to Athens safely and don't let anything happen to you or that ball, Jeff. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Next, Herschel Walker now has the SEC's greatest passer, Eric. All right, kid. <laughs> 9,290 yards. Shane Matthews is the man that he took the record from, and as you can see, Tommy Hobson, number three now on that list. He set the screen. Williams. And he's going to turn it into a big gainer, and Mike at the last minute, the middle backer, you could hear, I think it was Williams who was trying to get the outside man to come off his blitz. I think he had read what they were about to throw. I think he read screen all the way. Will Friend with a very good block for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now playing at the right guard. Williams hit by Storm, and that could be the last play of this third quarter. Sherman Williams, been a tough one on him tonight. But as the passing game has really clicked, particularly here in the second half, it seems as though that the the running lanes a little bit more available than they were in that first 30 minutes. Williams takes it for a couple, and that is the end of the third quarter with our score. Georgia 28 and Alabama 19. We'll be right back. There you see the score as we head to the final quarter, 28 to 19. Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey and Mike Adamley. And in this Southeastern Conference matchup tonight, that man there, Jay Barker. Boy, Mike, what a night. He is responsible for 83% of the offense. 246-yard passing of Alabama's total, 298. Ron, they haven't been able to run the ball and have not been able to keep the ball away from Georgia. Flea Flicker. Too much pressure, not able to get it away, and that's four times that Alabama has been sacked tonight. Ron, you go back to the running game, which is responsible for Alabama. As you look at Marion Campbell, 25 carries, 55 yards, only 2.2 yards per carry running the football. This just took too long. This blew up from the start. Good pressure by Derek Smith, number 57. And Whit Marshall, I think, is the man who finally finished him off. But Derek. The junior from Memphis is the one who caused the initial disarray. Third down and 11. Barker sings it, has it complete, but Curtis Brown is short of the first down mark, and it'll be fourth down for Alabama. And Brown is injured. Well, it's third and 11, Ron. You can't run an eight yard route, a curl route. They're talking about it over there now. Gene Stallings in. Jay Barker. As he came up four yards short. And as you can see, Curtis Brown. 
the left Curtis ankle, Brown. I believe. He has seven catches tonight for 71 yards. He's had a good night. Yeah, he has. Brian Deal, it's up to him right now, though, to boot Alabama out of harm's way. Deal. Very high. Good coverage kick. The fair catch and makes it just inside the 30. So we'll take a break. 13 33 left in the ball game. 28 19 Georgia. Well, some of the color and pageantry here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Again, a sellout cry out tonight for this uh, game against the Georgia Bulldogs. The fans in this state love this sport. Maybe like no other state in the Union, don't they? I'll give you a statistic in a second. Staten makes the stop on Hines Ward. Georgia play selection tonight. Couldn't draw it up any better. 24 rushes, 23 pass. Kept Alabama off balance all evening. Talking about how much Alabama football means. There's a questionnaire that they give the students here why you came to the University of Alabama. 73% said football was a reason. That was the biggest reason. Play will go for nothing. It's going to be a third down. Mike, I know you have been up there to speak, but I, I was asked by the Quad Cities Touchdown Club up in Florence to come up and, and visit with it. That was in July. And I asked him, I said, you guys meet year round. They said, no, we take a month off. We only meet 11 months. <laughs> That's how important football is in this state, though. 365 days a year, you're going to read something in the newspapers about football. So the crowd coming to their feet. Their ball club, speaking of the partisans, down 28 to 19. And it's a third down, and the line to make is up at the 39. Zaire Hibben, he will be sacked for the first time tonight. Matt Parker. Through inside and tackle low on Eric Zier. Beat Troy Stark, number 75, for the first sack of the evening. Tremendous pressure by Alabama. Malone is the man back deep. He signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 28 yard line. So the Alabama defense takes a break and a well deserved one. They have just sacked Mr. Zier. We'll be right back. 11:36 left in the ball game, 28 to 19, Georgia. And here's the importance. Look at the Eastern Division standings. Georgia in second place, along with South Carolina. Uh, they are at two and one. And quickly, let's look at the West and how they stand there. Alabama, two and zero. Oh. One and one is LSU and Mississippi State. And we just got a report. We have not gotten a later update, but LSU was trailing South Carolina late in the ball game, 18 to 17. Actually, 11:27 left in that ball game. South Carolina by one. Barker. Over the middle. Got Lynch open at the 45 and out to the 50 yard line. Whit Marshall finally puts a stop around. Just waited to Taryn Lynch to come open underneath. He looks first for the deep ball, then is able to come off to Terrence Lynch, number 45. Whit Marshall, number 36, and eventually run him down. Town Creek, Alabama. Barker going to go long this time. Got his man open, and he will head for six. Patrick Malone. Secondary run post pattern by Todrick Malone. He got behind the safety. 
Michael Proctor tries to make it a two-point ball game. And he does. Malone now eight catches, 175 yards, and two touchdowns. Neither team could move the ball after Alabama's touchdown. And with two minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the game, the Alabama defense has forced a Georgia punt, giving them good field position. But the tide continues to trail 28-26 here on ESPN Classic. Just outside the 50-yard line, no timeouts, 2-10 on the clock. Come on. Had key there, and he just let him too much. Good pressure that time by Matt Storm. Your 800 number defensive lineman. Twenty eight Georgia 26 Alabama Georgia scored first tonight. They got the football back and started driving and then turned it over. Alabama came back and tied it. And we've been seesaw ever since. Short drop and pressure and Barker tries to run. Breaks one, two, three tackles, and is all the way down to the 38-yard line. What an effort. Travis Stroud couldn't bring him down, number 66. But you're talking about loving the first-team quarterback now. Mike, what a ball game this young man has had. Strong in the lower body. Almost was brought down right here, but just broke the tackle of Travis Stroud. 15 yards on that carry as you watch Michael Proctor on the near side if Michael had his wish he doesn't want to be the hero he wants his team to score a touchdown and then go in and kick the extra point but he's ready if need be and as we mentioned inside the 40 he's perfect this year five of five outside the 40 yard line he's 0 4 you'd like to see with this 147 then pick up about 15 more yards Throws it complete, tight end Tony Johnson. They're on, they're in range now. 21 yards in the pass play. Now he did get knocked out of bounds, so it stops the clock at 138. Now I would figure you give the ball to Sherman Williams a couple times. You want that clock to run down. The last thing you want to do is give Eric Zyre some time. That's <laughs> so you want... Yeah. You want Sherman Williams right now to start carrying the football and start pumping it in front of that goal post and as close as he can get it. Pitches it to Sherman. He will go for very short yardage. Travis Jones, the senior from Irvington, Georgia, makes the stop. Good. And a timeout is called by Georgia. And this is a good move by Ray Goff. He has all three of his timeouts left so he's thinking the same thing if they're going to score I'm going to make sure I got a little bit of time on that clock for my quarterback well it gives us time now to do the visa players of the game for the University of Georgia I don't think there's much surprise Eric Zire 22 of 28 246 yards and for Alabama Jay Barker what an evening for him 395 yards passing two touchdowns is part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics. Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Reminding you, one week from tonight, we will be in the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida for number three against number 13 as Miami plays host to the Seminoles of Florida State. Again, those players will be slobbering and snorting and uh, getting ready for that one. Uh, we're, I know we're heading down midweek uh, around Wednesday to start our visits and didn't kind of try to get out of the way because that rivalry bears as much tension as any of them. Trying to think again. You put the ball in Sherman Williams' hands here. Even if Georgia keeps calling timeouts, you want to set it up. You set your field goal up.
second down. And they'll go this time with Howard Link. Whit Marshall steps up to make the hit on him, and Georgia calls another timeout at 1.22 left. His defense can hold on the next play. Eric Zire will have another shot to come on the field. He will be without any timeouts. George has one timeout left. Zara would love that opportunity with time on the clock. Of course, what he'd love more than anything is to see his defense keep him out of the end zone or away from a field goal. Gene Stallings would like to see Sherman Williams pick up about nine yards and get that first down and uh, keep that clock moving so he doesn't have to see Eric Zire. You know, there have been so many wonderful, wonderful performances in this ballgame tonight. But this is the second best passing night in Alabama history by Barker. Right, and, and, you, and you go back to big plays in this game and go back to the drop pass on Eric Zire on third down. Or Alabama wouldn't be here right now if that ball wasn't dropped drop because he had the first down. Yep. But, but there's a lot of plays like that, not just one by that particular player. Been a lot of big plays in this ball game all night. Option play. And they just move it to the middle of the field. And now enter Michael Proctor. The ball is going to be placed around the 20 yard line, which would make it a 30 yard attempt. And a timeout has been called by Georgia with 116 left in the ball game. So, again, to give you the numbers on Proctor from this range this year, he's perfect. He's 5 of 5. Georgia has to figure a way to get a push up inside and get some big body with their hands up in the air. You know, another, another guy to keep an eye on, Philip Daniels, who is 6'6, has gone up high a couple of times in this ballgame. We mentioned after one that on the first extra point, we thought he came very, very close. Well, so keep an eye on number 89. Well, 89 has got some height. He'll be in the middle. That's where he wants to push. The offensive coaches from Georgia already have their thoughts and when Eric Sire comes back on the field. Thirty two yards. That's the distance of the attempt. He nailed it. Kickers work by themselves off alone and they get a lot of descriptions about them of being a little different. But boy, when they hit it in pressure situations like this, those teammates really appreciate their efforts. And he, you talk about true, I mean, he knocked it right down the middle of the fairway. Came down to an 183 pound kicker. it up for Alabama. And they let this one know it's going to be caught. That ball would have gone out of bounds. Hines Ward up the sideline and he's going to keep it on the field of play. And we're checking Cannon Parker and his accuracy as far as field goals. 
Mike Hughes in virtually the same situation. Same type of kicker. Four right. for four from 30 to 39 yard range. And also we just found out Parkman's career long. 48 yards. Yeah. Yeah. Shovel pass. Hines Ward. 5-10 heading for the sideline and he will get out of bounds. Eric Turner made the stop at the 35. Still 55 ticks left on the clock. Coming up immediately following the ball game, the residents in college football scoreboard. Ron, by the ability of Heinz Ward to get out of bounds, not, they now can huddle Georgia, so he makes his two plays or three play calls that he has to make now. Steps up and throws it complete again. This time, Jerry German. So we mentioned in the first half, seven different Georgia receivers that Eric Zier had utilized. Two excellent offensive game plans, two excellent performance by quarterbacks tonight. Game means a lot. Very, very important to these kids. Double pass again. Hines Ward dropped behind the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be a third down situation. So what you teach your defense, Ron, right now is to lay on the ball carry, get up real slow, and you teach your offense, you got to get up as quick as you can. Third down, clock running. Zings it, and it is dropped. Jeff Thomas couldn't hold on. It's going to be a fourth down situation for Georgia. 25 seconds left. Say the fans of Alabama will be on Jay Barker's side from here on in. I should certainly hope so. I don't know what this young man needs to do to catch him. <laughs> so Michael Proctor at 1-12 left in the ball game with a 32-yard field goal. And once again, our final score from Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The Alabama Crimson Tide with a come from behind, 29 to 28 victory. For Mike Godfrey, Mike Adam Lee, and our entire outstanding ESPN crew, this is Ron Franklin saying so long, everybody.